my soccer universe. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Uh, that was another great soccer evening and I didn't see too much of it. Uh, to two stupid restrictions. First of all, I'm gonna try a slightly different route today because we again have beautiful sun, but I wanna try if I take it a look differently that you actually see me at least at the beginning a little bit better than you usual. Well, due to the uh, restrictions that they have here in Germany, uh, there are two, uh, you know, there's sky, there's the zone, and they're splitting the qualifiers. Unfortunately, not for the semifinals because that would have killed me, honestly. Um, but yeah, they, I could only see one game in it, it was Porto Liverpool, which I missed the first 10 minutes and probably the two best Porto chances. Um, Marega probably should have scored if he's a little bit more composed or whatever. I actually like this Marega guy. I think he's a striker that we might see more of soonish. Uh, at least that's the feeling I have. Uh, but Porto was pressing for about 25 minutes or so. Actually looked like, yeah, if they get the goal, there could be some suspense and then uh, money scores. Suspense goal. Uh, they looked at it where the goal was offside and yeah, uh, it was not. Other players were offside, but that doesn't matter. Um, you know, in the Champions League, every goal is checked. Which I think is not a necessarily bad thing, although it sometimes seems that uh, you know, it takes a little bit getting used to, and we get to VAR, uh, for sure. It takes some getting used to uh, that now goals can be called off for things that are perceived minor that you would have more or less waved off um, earlier, uh, just a year ago or so on. So yeah, um, it's just how it goes. Uh, what I'm waiting uh, for, and when, uh, goal reviews, there are two things. Uh, First of all, why don't, why don't we only see the referee? <laughs> show the replay, right there. Right there and then show a replay that we actually have at least a little bit of a feeling what they're watching. It's great when the referee goes to the screen that uh, you see a lot of stuff uh, happening. Uh, you know, you see what the referee is seeing. But actually, I would love it. If they could just show uh, just yeah, uh, all replay that we have anyway already ready. I don't need to see the referee's face. Or you can show it as a picture in picture or something like that. Uh, that to me is always a little bit annoying because you don't know what they're even checking. Uh, but if you see at least one replay, it doesn't need to be the best angle. Give it the best angle when uh, you know during the rock or in Serie A, where, 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 where they show you a replay. And then you see the best angle during the review when they do it. Uh, so yeah, that would be a nice thing for the Champions League because in, uh, uh, in Spain and in Italy you get that immediately. And the other thing is I'm waiting. Uh, when will we put a commercial there? I'm just saying, I mean, I watch a lot of them. Uh, I used to watch a lot of American Sports Live and uh, every break there is a commercial. I mean, if, the, if there's a review, they have heavy time in such a way that um, the referee uh, makes his, his, his announcement after a very short commercial break. So, just for added revenue, I mean, I don't get it wrong, I would like to have no commercial, but that seems, seems to be prime. And you can use this time for that you save on commercial maybe for a little bit bad analysis uh, in halftime break or something like that. Just throwing it out there. Uh, it's gonna come. I am sure it, this is gonna come that there will be a commercial break or something like that. Anyway, uh, with that goal 1 nil done, the game was done. I think uh, Porto needed four goals and this was not in that. I thought if they make a 1 nil, they could make a 2 nil, uh, and then that would have been that. Um, then uh, 1 nil, maybe there was a chance, but not that way. And yeah, so it went further. Uh, I think uh, Salah in the second half scored one, then Porto pulled one back, which was very, very, very deserved. I think Porto should have gotten a draw out of it, but uh, they, they completely, you know, they have the big championship uh, battle as Liverpool. 
and Liverpool basically had a sparring match and Porto surely didn't go full in, in their game anymore and so um, they uh, conceded two more by Firmino, by Hedda and then Van Dijk also from Hedda so it's 4-1 to Liverpool uh, and Liverpool will play Barcelona that's a tasty tie I gotta say but now I already spent five minutes talking about the game that no one is talking about so uh, let's get right to it I didn't see the game live I actually followed a little bit on the Twitter reaction which I really thought or already with the Liverpool uh, Bayern matchup is not a bad way if I can 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 you see it if I look at my Twitter uh, you get a feeling of what's happening uh, and the game was crazy from the get-go. Now, uh, did I mind not seeing the game? Of course, I, it bothered me. I probably would have even chosen this game if I had the choice. Um, but as I said, the bright side is I almost got another uh, jersey post done. And I secured another wonderful jersey for me. And I'm very happy about that too. So I'm gonna get really two special jerseys for not that much very 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 soon and that makes me truly happy okay let's go to the game this was a record setting game right from the get go uh, four goals in the first 11 minutes that's a champion league so far it was four or four goals in 20, 20 minutes and i would love to tell you which game that was i uh, will probably look it up uh, today just an eye on the personal interest but i don't know Raheem Sterling shows that he's on great form, gets the first goal, I think, in the third minute already. Uh, off a pass from De Bruyne, and we will hear about De Bruyne a lot uh, in this review. He was sensational. Uh, he shows that he's one of the best. He showed in the game that he's one of the best players in Europe, bar none. So the, uh, they get off to a great start, and you think, yeah. City has got a control of the match now and played home safely. No, no, no. Uh, error from the port ball gets to Son, Yunmin Son, and he, with a deflect, uh, slight deflection, gets it into, in, into the net. I think it was in the seventh minute. Uh, three minutes later, again, Laporte loses the ball. It is, uh, was it Ericsson or whatever? I I don't know, again, it falls to Son, it, it actually assists the last minute too, too, too much because it's the finish of Son that deserves all the credit. It uh, takes the ball, kind of turns it around and curls it beautifully in the net, 2-1 after 10, 10 minutes. And at that moment you're thinking, oh, Spurs is super safe, I mean, they turned around, they have their two away goals. Um, City is now really three goals away from advancing and that might be tough. A minute later, <laughs> a minute later, the ball goes to Bernardo Silva. It was actually very nicely played. Um, who shoots it through Rose's legs and that takes a wicked deflection that Yoris cannot save. And the, the game is level at two after 11 minutes. Uh, I don't think I've seen many games with a more frantic start. In fact, I cannot remember a single game with a more frantic start than those four goals in 11 minutes. Uh, and it's probably to the point where I actually want to rewatch this the start, the start of the game. It's just insane. Now, while we take a little breather, George, Jersey Major, I saw a lot of complaints about uh, Tottenham's kick choice. Um, understandable to a point, I actually didn't feel it that bad. What was bad was the grey stockings. I think if you make City play in white stockings and um, Spurs can use the regular navy stockings, I, uh, something to the, I, I think they have green and navy stockings uh, with that kit. Which is not that beautiful of a kit to, be, to begin with, but it's also not super horrible. Uh, but if, I, if they would do that, I think the complaints would be much less. Uh, could have 
played in Old Navy, probably, uh, but you know, UEFA doesn't like blue or blue, even if it's two shades of blue, so FIFA does, doesn't like it either, look it up in Europe by France. Um, so yeah, some people have been saying if Spurs would have played in their white jer jerseys with navy pants, it would have been better. I disagree, because white and light blue, that might, might be too close. So, um, I honestly didn't find it horrible, I was disappointed. Yes, well, I was a little bit this this way. I would have liked to see the nice city uh, tops, the uh, navy ones, which I actually like. But it wasn't not to the point where I'm saying this game was unfortunate. Uh, actually, that I couldn't understand. But you know, I think that I will make now a few points um, where I'm sure, and this is the first one, where I'm absolutely sure that this is controversial uh, because it, people see things differently and it's their right to say, okay, that's, uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, I have my personal view and it might not agree with yours uh, and that's fine. We don't, that's actually the great thing, we don't need to all have the same opinion. Uh, but we, don't, we can even argue about it, maybe see if, the, if we can come to a ground and if not then that's that and we don't need to uh, get upset about things. I personally found that the jurors you mentioned fine. Um, back to the game. Raheem Sterling made a second to make it 3-2 and that was the uh, score at halftime and actually it seemed like this might be uh, at that moment and that's the first time I really actually um, took note of the game is when it was 3-2. Um, crazy. And I thought, oh yeah, 3-2 and then I saw how it was going. It was the perfect 3-2 with, you know, two lead changes. That's what I call the perfect 3-2. Um, and so I thought, yeah, this will go see this way. And if you saw the beginning of the second half, uh, I think that was really how it was going. I mean, there were a few good saves by Yoris in there. Um, I think his biggest one came later when, when, when it was already 4-2. Uh, uh, but yeah, the 4-2 came. Um, again, De Bruyne a little bit slaloming through the Spurs defense, putting it to Aguero, who has his first real touch in, in the box, slams it home. I get it. I'm not, as I said before, I'm not an Aguero fan, I said it last week already, but I give it to him, uh, this was a, such a well taken shot. Really, uh, this is the, the stuff that he does very, very, very well. So it is 4-2, City moves on and could have been a 5-2 pro, 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 probably. Uh, but Spurs actually gets close itself a little bit back in the game and now here I really have to rely on what they tell me in the uh, highlights package. Um, they get a little bit back in the game, of course they need to get a gag and a goal to advance and the goal comes in a controversial fashion from a corner kick. Uh, Sissoko had to be substituted and Llorente comes on. And on a corner kick, the ball goes on your rentas arm on the hip and into goal. Now, <laughs> this is now the, the really hard part. Uh, I've seen two, I've seen the highlights. They say the goal, it, they looked at it in VAR, it is all fine, the arm is at the body. Um, and falls into the net. Uh, there's no intent there, so case closed. Um, and kind of the discussion going against the line, if this was in the other box, this would not have been a penalty. Now on um, ESPN FC, they entirely disagree with it, where they say that uh, it's the new rule. Uh, where the ball cannot be, uh, the hand cannot be material in scoring of a goal. 
So basically, if the ball comes off the head and the uh, defender get, uh, the attacker gains an advantage through that, it falls on the hip because it hit the hand first, falls on the hip and goes in. Uh, the, the idea is that it should not be a goal. I don't know where I fall on, the, on which side I fall on the bit. I probably go a little bit more that it was a goal because again I find you know and the new rule is not yet in place as far as I know. Uh, I have said okay this is how it goes. I think the, the ball the hand is within the natural silhouette. Uh, there clearly is no movement towards the ball so comes off the hand goes on the hip goes in it is yeah I think it's a tough call now the most important thing is that when uh, the referee Chuck here reviewed the play he didn't get the best angle he got an angle where it really looks like uh, yeah the ball falls on the hip and into goal so I think you cannot even blame the ref uh, the one thing you could probably blame is why don't they get a different perspective because you really want to see it from all angles and why does it take so long especially since it's in the home stadium I mean this is a this would be a, that that to me is this was a um, decision that went in favor of the away team where because we didn't get the right angle. I don't know if he would have waved it off if he would see her have seen the other angle because as I said no one can actually agree. I mean I've read it even, even on Twitter. It should have been in, it should have been waved off. No, it should not have been waved off. I think no one can really agree on it. Uh, and in that sense the goal was given. Was it clear and obvious? Probably not. I think that's the key here. It was not clear and obvious that the ball was handled. And for that reason, uh, okay, let's leave it where it is. Uh, if I was a City fan, I'm not. I'm not that big of a Spurs fan either, but I have a Spurs jersey. Uh, I would have been upset. I absolutely would, 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 would have been upset. City, of course, now to, uh, Spurs is on. It's uh, on, to, on to the next round. It's 4-3. Uh, in a way, I was happy about that result. I said just I'm not a Spurs fan, but you know, I was happy that because I really want to see Ajax. I really want to see Ajax Spurs. I said it yesterday in the video. I'm all about that matchup. And so, yeah, uh, game goes on uh, well into stoppage time. I mean, it's five minutes, I think, our game uh, on and well into stoppage time. Um, was it Ericsson who lost the ball? Um, it was a very weird back pass that gets deflected by Bernardo Silva and that way it gets on the path of Aguero who puts it across and Raheem Sterling scores seemingly the winner and I mean everyone's going uh, apeshit at that moment uh, the whole stadium is going crazy yes you got the stoppage time winner you move on to the next round you rid yourself of the burn although City has been in the semi-final before but since they were so dominated by Real Madrid in that one, uh, no one actually really remembers that one, <laughs> I want to say. This was one of the, the poorest showing of a uh, semi-final in, uh, I think I've seen in a long time. Uh, Roma at Liverpool last, last, last year would have had a chance, but then uh, Roma acquitted themselves, I think, in, uh, at home. But that city against Real Madrid was one of the dullest things ever. Anyway, then VAR gets in there and I think they, they didn't look at it up. I mean, and that's good. I, I actually like that they can do this on the box to the side, the offside, or no, 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 no side. It was by a hair offside and I think the big discussion there again was um, what was the intent in the deflection because if he was just shot at uh, I'm not sure if this would have been given to the side. Probably because there was a little bit of an intent in the movement to uh, to intercept that ball. That's why it was given to the side. What a dramatic finish. I mean, it would have been dramatic without VAR, but I think VAR completely turned around. And you could see it when uh, Pochettino and his staff celebrated afterwards. 
I mean that game even with me not watching it I stayed up to see at least the goals uh, and they actually showed the the waved of goal uh, to make it 5-3 as well in a very quick highlights and uh, I felt I needed to stay up. Yes, it cost me at least half an hour, if not more, of sleep uh, that I could have well used. I mean, I'm not, took, uh, I'm not doing that well this morning, let's put it that way. But that was a game that we'll be talking about for a long time. Uh, over, the, over two legs, I think the Juventus Ajax was better. But for a single game, this is the best game. This was easily the best game of the quarterfinals. And again, Champions League in the quarterfinals, it doesn't get much better. We had only one real good in there. Uh, nah. Yeah, we had only. I think the Liverpool Porto was, was a little bit the good. And now at uh, Manchester United. Uh, so the first game was also all, all the second one, I mean, thanks to Messi, thanks to a couple of great goals, was not that uh, bad. But yeah, two absolute great games. And now we're looking at Spurs against Ajax in the semis, and I think this will be a wonderful semifinal. Yes, whoever gets through it will not be the favorite in the final. I think the. Uh, most people will, will agree that the other semi-final, uh, it's most likely that the winner comes from that one. Having said that, I'm really looking forward to Spurs Ajax. Uh, and it actually reversed now for Ajax, they actually have the second uh, leg at home, which I'm not sure. I think even was his son will miss that match. Kane is, I mean, it doesn't look that bad for Ajax. Uh, and I mean, anyway. Whoever they would, would have gotten, I think Ajax would have fancied themselves quite well. They will, of course, play the outsider card, deservedly so. Um, but I, I would love to see Ajax in the final. That would be so great. And honestly, Ajax Barcelona. And not because I don't like Liverpool. Uh, I said it uh, before, I mean, Ajax, it would be my first one to win and then it would be uh, and then it would be Barcelona. But um, I think I could live in an Ajax Liverpool final quite well. The only reason why I don't want to see it is because of jerseys. I think uh, the other one, Barcelona and Ajax would play both in their um, regular jer jer jerseys. Whereas uh, if Ajax I think will have uh, will have the choice of home. And then what will Liverpool play in? They will not play in all red. Although it's Potentially could work. They will probably play in the purple kits and I don't like that one. I don't like the prospect of that one. I don't even think they will play in the grey or Ajax will be forced to play in the black ones. So, you know, that's the main reason why I don't want to see necessarily that one. Uh, but whatever it will be, I think we have great matches ahead. And that's the best thing about it. Anyway, fill me in. I have seen highlights, I have watched discussions, I have watched the Twitter. Uh, feel, feel, feel me if I'm missing anything here uh, and I don't have my order of events quite right, I know in the second half. But yeah, give me also a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.